Okay, let's talk about the post superglobal array. Now, if you watched my video already on the get superglobal array, the syntax here is going to be almost identical. We have a form, and the method, instead of being set to get, is being set to post. The action is where we're sending the data in the form. The page that we're on is post.php, and that's where we're sending this. It's the same thing when you look at forms and you look at the action of a form. It's really the same thing as doing this. I'll refresh my page here. There we go. I've created an anchor tag here that points to post.php. I click on it. That page is fetched from the server. Because it's a PHP page, it means that the PHP interpreter has actually looked at this page and generated this page for me. When you submit a form and you're sending it to post.php or whatever the page is, you're doing the same thing as this. The only difference is with a form, we're looking at the method. Anchors are always get. With post, what we're doing is we're taking this data, we're bundling it up, but we're not putting it in the query string. That's the difference between post and get. With post, we're actually putting it into the body. So if I fill this form out, I put some information inside here, and I send this. I have sent a request to post.php, same thing as if I clicked on this anchor tag. But the difference is, if I go down in here and I look at the actual request, we can see the request method was post instead of get. When you click on the anchor tag, it's get. Or if I come in here and I set the method to get, it's get. I've set it to post, that's what's reflected here. The response is what comes back from the server. The request is what I'm sending to the server, information about where I was coming from and about my browser. But I've got this form data down here. So instead of query string, it says form data. I have a form data object with name value pairs. And the data was form URL encoded. So it took everything that was typed and it encoded it so that it could be sent over HTTP off to the server so that this will get processed on the server. Then I'm going to have up here that super global array like we did before. So I can check, say if is set post, and then we look for the same things that we did with get. We're looking for full name, and we're also looking for the other one, which is called email. So this syntax is going to look the exact same as it did for get. The only difference is we're using dollar sign underscore post instead of dollar sign underscore get. Inside of here, if I want to write one of them out, I can do that. I can write out full name as an example. So if I fill this in again, stevie.work.org, there we go. I click send. There it is. It's being written out on the page. Inside of here, that's what we sent off to the server. Now, URL encoded was one way of encoding the data. If you're uploading files, then you have to change this. You have to go from this part right here to this. Now I'm going to remove the other one. There we go, and I'll just leave it down in the comments here so I can use it later. Multi-part form data does sort of the same thing. It bundles up the form data. It uses post. It's going to send it to the server. But what it does is it t treats each one of these fields as a separate attachment. It's, it's like if you were attaching a file, attaching an image or a resume or something to a form. We can put an input type equals file here, and we can upload that. So let's try this out. I'll click on the link so we're reloading the page. If I view the page source, I can see down here that, yes, we've changed it to multi-part form data, so we have updated that. Now I'll come in here again, and I'll add in this data. Now I just want to demonstrate here the difference with multi-part form data. So click Send, take a look, scroll down to the bottom, here we go. Now I've got Request Payload, instead of that form data object, Request Payload. And it has this string here is being repeated again and again and again. What this does is it breaks up what's being sent to the server into a series of it's like attachments. The first attachment talks about what we're sending. 
Well, it's a form data thing. Its name is full name and the value is Steve. And then here's a barrier. So this barrier breaks up all the different pieces. And if you had 14 of them, then you'd have 14 of these barriers in between them. Uh, the other one, email, and then there's the value right here. So request payload versus form data. If you're not attaching any actual files, it doesn't really matter which one you do, you're still gonna be able to get the data. You can see I still got Steve written up here. I'm still using post, I'm still getting the values. It's just two ways of doing it. The only difference between multi-part form data and application XWWW form URL encoded is that multi-part form data must be used if you are sending an attached file. That's the only difference. So post works the same as get. It's an array. It's got all the different form fields. Remember, it's the name, not the ID. The ID gets used for JavaScript and CSS. The name is what goes to the web server. The name is what you're going to see here. Name, name. All right, great. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.